My sister was about 33 years old at the time. She was married and she had four children. She went down the stairs and the corridor and set herself ablaze. She used paraffin and um, it was a terrible death. This is my sister, Moderwa. Interesting about this photo is that she actually died in the same dress that she's wearing in the photo. So for me, this is a very powerful um, photograph because this is how she was. In a sense, um, so society failed her, her church failed her, and and yes, her family failed her because being a firstborn, she probably, maybe there are a lot of expectations on her. And at the time, counseling services were not available or out of reach for most of the members of the society. My sister could not access uh, such a service that could have helped her at her time of distress. Had we had such a service as they do in other parts of the world, maybe, maybe my sister would not have taken her own life. Maybe she'd have found help. WHO has given a high priority to suicide and suicide prevention efforts for a very long time. However, countries are asking us to do more. And in response to that, we have decided to have a WHO's report on suicide. Many people whose lives have not been intimately affected by suicide seem to think that it happens out there, over there, to someone else, to another family. The reality is suicide happens with far greater frequency than any of us should ever feel comfortable and allow. Every 40 seconds across this globe, someone dies by suicide. Every 40 seconds. I attempted suicide two times, um, once when I was 14 years old and once when I was 29. I didn't get much help when I first attempted suicide. I think the help that should have been available to a 14 year old who was suicidal is practical help and just have empathy. It's that, that human connection, otherwise you are totally alone. I would say suicide causes such a burden the damage it causes to the family. Imagine so many children who are orphaned because their parents have died. The scar of a suicide we carry till we die. You are so low. You are so, this, this problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. There is institutions, there's organizations that actually got professional people dealing with such a thing. It is considered that it is a cry for help and most of the people, they give very clear signals and the stats show that, you know, 80% uh, of the people give very, very clear signs. But we fail to recognize those signals and those are very clear and visible signals. So in the moment of crisis, if there is somebody at the other hand who can you know, help you understand what you are going through. In, in those moments of despair, if there is somebody who can actually listen and understands your feelings, then you can definitely come out. Or it, it is considered and we have experienced that. It is a big support for people under distress. We have to look at, you know, uh, what countries uh, can afford and, and thinking through, well, what interventions uh, are most appropriate and most cost effective in your particular situation. Awareness programs, uh, responsible reporting in, in, in the media, alcohol control. Some of these interventions are not only effective, but also very low cost. So what we hope will be one of the results of our approach to this will be national dialogue resulting in national strategies and plans. One approach is 
to simply address the means of committing suicide. Lots of suicide happen with firearms or with toxic products, for example, pesticides in, in Asia. And reducing uh, access to some of these means uh, has been shown a successful suicide strategy. So the response needs to be based on broad public health principles, but tailored to the reality of each country. We do know what works and what doesn't work.